Hello YouTube, this is Adam Rice of AM Productions. Welcome to this episode of the Godzilla Vlogs, where we talk about anything and everything Godzilla. In 1955, a little film was made called Godzilla Raids Again. Now, I know, this film isn't very well liked by the Godzilla community, and to be honest, I don't exactly really like the film. I think the film is neither good nor bad. It kind of unfortunately falls somewhere uh, in between. And, and the biggest reason why this happens is because, unfortunately, this falls into the realm of Quickie Sequel. This movie was literally released, like, less than nine months after the original Godzilla was released. It was, like, that quick. And everything from this movie is kind of subpar. Everything from, you know, just the overall direction of the film, the imagery isn't as good as, you know, the original Godzilla. Of course, the original Godzilla, it's hard to compare it to the original Godzilla, because the original Godzilla is such a masterpiece. This is much worse than a film like Son of Kong. Son of Kong, for example, I thought had a lot of heart, and it also kind of knew what it wanted to be, despite it, you know, being a quickie sequel. That movie being released the same year, 1933, as the original masterpiece, King Kong. Uh, you know, Son of Kong had heart. This movie has moments in it, but it, it, it's Godzilla Raids again, but it, it's not as, as solid as a film like Son of Kong. That being said, though, I recently rewatched it. Rewatched, you know, Godzilla Raids again. And admittedly, I was kind of obsessed with this film for a while when I first got it when I was in sixth grade. Because this was roughly around the time when, you know, movies. Uh, the Godzilla. The Showa Godzilla film started being released on those classic media DVDs, which featured both the, the Japanese and English versions of the film. But this one, I had not even seen that much of an inkling of. And I was always curious by it because. Uh, specifically, a, a book I had sort of played it up as Gigantus the Fire Monster, as well as the, the Animal Planet documentary, uh, Animal Icons, really showed a, quite a bit of Godzilla Raids again, and it intrigued me because this is the first of the Godzilla series, if that makes any sense. And I, and I wanted to watch it. Nevertheless, I thought it was a piece of crap, but I kept watching it over and over again, to the point that on my old VHS camera that I had, I actually built like miniature cities and stuff and recreated uh, got the fight from Godzilla Raids again with stop motion animation, in which I had this this, this Stegosaurus and I just put plast uh, put Play-Doh all over the back of it and stabbed a bunch of chopped up uh, chopped up uh, pipe cleaners in it and you know called that Angerous because I didn't have any toys Godzilla related other than this one you know Godzilla model which was a crappy Godzilla model that a friend found at a garage sale and gave to me. What I noticed on this new viewing of Godzilla Raids again is something that most films lack, actually. And this is the one thing that I will completely and utterly praise about Godzilla Raids again. And that is the use of sound. And of course, I'm talking about the Japanese version, not the the bastardized American version, Gigantus the Fire Monster, which I still think Gigantus is a cool title, by the way. No, the Japanese version of Godzilla Raids Again has these wonderful, wonderful moments of near silence. And I mean, they're not silent. You know, there are still sound effects in them. But everything is very quiet. And as a result, specifically the parts where Godzilla comes to Osaka and the battle begins and so on and so forth, as a result, the film has some wonderful atmosphere. It makes me think of a film, uh, Frankenstein, the one made in 1931 with Boris Karloff. Frankenstein's monster sees sunlight for the first time and he reaches up. That scene is almost completely silent other than some of the ambience of the room. No music or anything. If you had a scene like that in today's film, or in, in a movie made today, that scene would have like this, this sweeping music in it or something, or something really atmospheric for, for music. And it made me think, my god, you know, sometimes less is more. The less sound effects we hear, sometimes the better off we are. Or sometimes if there's no music, the better it is. And Godzilla Raids, again, specifically the attack scene, is, a, is wonderful at presenting this lack of sound, this lack of, you know, uh, any sort of, like, bombastic music. And it really sets it off, you know, because if you compare, like, the other monster battles that would come after this, you know, with, with films specifically with the most prolific giant monster composer, Akira Fukube. Masaru Saho did the music for, for Godzilla Raids again. This was his first score ever, and he hates the score. And let's admit it, the score isn't that good. Neither is the score that same year he made the score for Half-Human. That score, though better than Raids again, is not that good either. But 
you know, Akira, if you compared the music to the fight scene in this film, to, to the fight scene in, you know, another, you know, Godzilla film, let's, let's even put King Kong versus Godzilla, uh, the next Godzilla film. Akira Fukube's music is, is very loud and bombastic, you know, uh, in, in that film during the fight scene between Kong and Godzilla. Now, if you watch the fight scene in Godzilla Raids again, you almost don't even notice that music is there. And specifically in one sequence, I really want to draw that out. And it's the sequence where the female lead of the film is sitting in her house overlooking Osaka, and she sees what looks like a mushroom cloud rising in the distance from the fight between Godzilla and Anguirus. It has a music there, and it's very quiet and very dull. And it's perfect for the sequence, the atmosphere, how quiet it is. And it presents such such a heavy and dense atmosphere where you just feel like this, this is utterly devastating. This is so creepy. And then to add to that, during the fight sequences, I noticed that there's almost no sound at all other than rubble, which I loved. The monsters hardly roar at all, which I actually liked. It's like they're so concentrated in, in their fighting they don't roar. The very few times throughout that fight do you actually hear the monsters roar. And another sequence that I also think about, the, actually, this sequence has no music at all, but it perfectly sets up the atmosphere and, and dreariness of the situation, is when the jets are flying over Osaka, when the first, you know, alarm goes out that, you know, Godzilla is approaching the city. When the jets are flying over the city, to, to compare and contrast it to the American version, in the American version, the main character is narrating over the jets flying over the city and utterly ruin the sequence. In the Japanese version, all you hear are the sirens of the city and the jets flying over. Something very... people would recognize instantly as something being from World War II, you know, with the American bombers flying over the city. Very ominous and... and cre that's a good word for it. It's very... it makes you feel on edge. The other one, too, is with Dr. Yamane. Dr. Yamane's cameo in this film. When he shows the footage of the first Godzilla attack, which I think, granted, is kind of a silly scene. Literally, less than a year ago, Godzilla destroyed Tokyo, and you have to show footage of what that Godzilla did. I think they would remember a giant radioactive lizard coming out of the ocean less than a year before. They show footage from, from the original Godzilla being projected on a screen, and all you hear in that sequence interwoven with a few reaction shots of the people watching it is the sound of the projector. You feel the weight in the room. It's almost like you're there listening to it. It's almost like the situation is so bad that no one dares speak and the silence, to be quite honest, the silence is deafening. You know, you really feel how horrid the situation is and how terrible everything is. I mean, granted, the movie doesn't really play it up that well at all. But these silent moments work so well. To praise the fight sequence, the fight sequence is unlike any other monster battle ever put to, to film in terms of Japanese kaiju over how animalistic it is. And as a result, the sound effects are so good. Like, you just hear the squeaking of metal. You hear the stomping of the footsteps. You hear the sound of rubble and flames in the background. This is some really great stuff. And again, you, the music that plays under it, though unpleasant to just listen to, really gives off this this idea of imminent doom it, it's very uncomfortable and it, it and this isn't done by accident uh, the director motoyoshi oda though he is kind of like a handyman he was competent enough to make decisions like this and, and especially eiji tsuburaya beside him i think that that was definitely a decision that was made to make this fight seem very quiet and again it might also have something to do with the lack of technology at the time. Uh, even if you look at the original Godzilla, some of the moments in that film are very quiet during the during Godzilla's rampage. Very quiet, though they are few and far between. But it works in that film. You know, the, the music and, and the sound effects and stuff like that, it works in context of that particular film. In this film, Godzilla reads again, the silence is what makes it loud. It's the opposite of the original Godzilla. Even though we have two monsters duking it out, it's so quiet and ominous that it just sucks. It may, it does. It makes you feel uncomfortable. For example, uh, before they destroy the, the pavilion there, you know, the Osaka castle, you have the two monsters circling each other. Almost no sound effects, not even footsteps. It's just Masaru Sato's 
really, really creepy and ominous music, and I really like it. Compared to that to the American version, where there's a non-stop music, the monsters don't stop roaring, and it totally loses the effect of that scene. It, you, you lose the, the creepiness, the, the horror, even, of that sequence, which is something that I really liked. Horror d does very well, and that's a good way to describe it. It does, it feels, this feels like something from a horror film with these silent sequences, and I applaud the filmmakers for doing that. Again, this is the, like, number one thing that I fucking love in Godzilla Raids, again, is those moments of quiet, even though there's all this stuff going on. It reminds me of a sequence in one of my favorite films of all time, The Andromeda Strain. Uh, now, The Andromeda Strain is about a virus from space and blah, 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 and a bunch of people trying to fix it and so on and so forth. Well, there's a sequence for the experiment on a monkey. It's kind of an infamous scene because of animal cruelty, even though the monkey turned out fine. You know, they're talking, they're getting the monkey ready to expose it to Andromeda to see what happens. When they lower the cage and lift it up to expose the monkey to the air, everything goes dead quiet, and all you can hear is the air ventilation system. There's no dialogue, no anything. All That's all you hear is that, that hum of the air ventilation, uh, ventilation system. That, as you see the monkey convulse and, and fall over dead because of Andromeda, that worked so much better than us hearing the monkey screaming in pain or, or anything like that, or, or you know, even cutting to, to more shots. You know, if that film was made today, you'd hear this like really dark music and, and like, duh, 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 like the Hans Zimmer kind of dri driving music that's so stereotypical in films today. And that's a huge problem I have with movies today, is that, you know, movies don't know how to shut up. In fact, one thing that I loved about all the old Japanese films is that Japanese, old Japanese films were, had amazing sound. I mean, it was certainly dated compared to today, but Japanese films knew nine times out of ten when to shut the fuck up. You know, you watch Americanized versions of those movies and you have usually a narrator added to it. Look at Rodan. Some sequences in the American version of Rodan are utterly ruined because of that added narrator or added music and so on and so forth. Which is kind of ironic because in the Japanese version of Rodan, during the attack, the, Amer uh, the American distributors actually cut out Akira Fukube's music entirely, except with a couple of exceptions, and added different sound effects in there to make the scene louder than in the Japanese version. And the American attack sequences in Rodan work far better, in my opinion, than the Japanese one do. Because the Japanese one, one, it's edited slower. And, and two, Akira Fukube has this music in there. Now the music is good, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that the Japanese version is bad. I just prefer the American one, because the American one lets you get swallowed up in the situation, and all you hear are the sound effects and people screaming and so on and so forth, while the Japanese one, there's this driving music underneath it, and so on and so forth. And, and, and that, to me, takes something out of the sequence. It does, that music doesn't need to be there. And Godzilla Raids Again was smart enough to know that this sequence doesn't need music for it to work. This sequence doesn't need, you know, monsters roaring every five seconds for it to work. The tanks rolling up onto the shoreline before Godzilla lands in Godzilla Raids again, it doesn't need music here. Pull out the music, scale down the sound effects, and it actually draws you in more. It makes it much more tense than what it would have been with the music in it. One of my complaints of this movie called Pontypool, which I have praised to no end, and I highly recommend you guys watch it, is that Pontypool has this score to it, this very creepy score, that to be honest, I wish wasn't in it. That to be honest, I wish that score was taken out and all we had is the nat sound, the natural audio. Keep the camera movements, the coloring, everything the same, but take that score out and just leave the audio as it is. And I think the sequence would have become much, much more intense. It would have actually drawn you in more. That lack of sound would have drawn you in more. And it's something that I really like playing with. Really, really like playing with. I tried desperately to do it with Which Way They Walk, but I failed miserably at it. Admittedly, I did. Some people say I did all right, but I think I failed miserably at it. I needed more shots is my biggest problem. It's something that I want to continue doing with my films. 
if you don't need music there, don't put it there. And that's a problem with Hollywood, you know. Hollywood today has nothing but music in it and so on and so forth. The music score, the music scores that just don't shut up. You don't need it. And that's something I really liked about Godzilla Raids again, is that that lack of sound, that lack of music, or sometimes when there is sound and music and so on and so forth, it's play, it's so downplayed that it makes it more creepy and it sucks you in more. And I praise it like there's no tomorrow. I think I think that was a great thing, a great decision on the part of the, the director, the editors, and, and so on and so forth. And that, and I think the cinematography also works during the fight scene. I mean, yeah, the monsters, I think, move too fast and so on and so forth, but it almost works. If they were just a little slower, it would work a little better just because of how animalistic the fighting is. And just that lack of sound is what sucks you into the, almost, not so much the realism, but just the whole consequences of this battle that works so well. And just very atmospheric, and I utterly, that's the one thing that I praise about Godzilla Raids again. Now I'm just kind of repeating myself, so. That's what I have to say about Godzilla Raids again, and sound. So, I hope you enjoy it. So leave a comment telling me what you think about this whole situation or any other examples that you think where music should have been there and wasn't or a great chance or a great example of, of less is more in film. Like AM Productions for all up-to-date information there. Uh, and hit the subscribe button. Uh, like the Godzilla Saga. More information coming soon. In the end, this is Adam Noyce of AM Productions saying... Sign on.